What greater sacrifice can a person make than to lay down their life for their country? Around the world, in 10 different countries, 125,000 Americans rest in fields they died to liberate. Honoring America's fallen overseas and preserving these hallowed grounds for future generations is the purpose of the American Battle Monuments Commission. ABMC maintains 24 permanent American military cemeteries and 25 federal memorials and monuments. They are located in countries throughout Europe, in North Africa, Latin America, and the Philippines. Millions of American and foreign citizens come to ABMC cemeteries each year. We're greatly moved by the enormous numbers of crosses and the wonderful way it is kept. These cemeteries are among the most beautiful and meticulously maintained shrines of their nature in the world. They follow the footsteps of those who fought and died for our freedom. Sacred and serene, they were created to honor America's fallen heroes. But they are also intended for the living. Join us in these fields of honor. In 1914, a massive war broke out in Europe that threatened the heartland of Western civilization. America entered World War I in 1917 to come to the aid of her European allies. By the time it was over, more than 83,000 Americans had lost their lives. More than 4,500 were missing in action. Following the war, the U.S. government gave families and loved ones the option of sending remains home or interring them overseas in permanent memorial cemeteries. Sixty percent of those who died were eventually returned to the United States, but more than 30,000 Americans remained with their comrades in the lands where they fell. Many temporary cemeteries and monuments had been created with no provision for long-term care. General John J. Pershing, commander of American forces in World War I, asked Congress to correct this situation. And in 1923, the American Battle Monuments Commission was established. Eight permanent World War I cemeteries and numerous standalone memorials were commissioned by ABMC. The finest architects, artists, and craftsmen in the world were engaged in their creation. Finished, they became timeless commemorative places to honor those who sacrificed their lives for the nation. During World War I, U.S. naval operations were based throughout the British Isles to escort ships, transport troops, and combat the deadly German U-boats. About 30 miles southwest of London, England, is Brookwood American Cemetery. The more than 400 men and women buried here died from all manner of cause in World War I. The memorial is shaped like a small temple, and inside there is an ornate chapel. On its walls are engraved the names of the missing in action. Included are all 114 hands of the Coast Guard cutter USS Tampa. Their deeds are not forgotten in this quiet cemetery in England. When American troops first joined their allies in combat in France, they quickly learned how deadly war could be. Just outside the city of Paris is the beautiful Suren American Cemetery. Here, over 1,500 American military men and women are buried 
within view of the Eiffel Tower. The memorial is a masterpiece of classically styled architecture. A magnificent chapel commemorates the accomplishments of the American Expeditionary Force in France. Today, the cemetery serves as a symbol of the shared history between the French and American people. In June 1918, American forces were rushed to the Ain Marne salient, where the Germans had pushed through the Allied line and were threatening Paris. After weeks of fighting, the enemy drive was stopped, but thousands of Americans were lost. Forty-five miles east of Paris is Ain Marne American Cemetery. More than 2,000 soldiers and Marines are buried in this pastoral setting. The cemetery rests at the foot of the hill on which stands Bellow Wood, where many Marines were killed. The memorial chapel was erected over frontline trenches dug by the American 2nd Division. Inside is a carved marble altar and walls engraved with the names of the missing. Nearby is the Marine Monument at Bellow Wood. Vestiges of shell holes, trenches, and weapons can still be seen in the vicinity. Six miles from the cemetery is the Chateau Thierry Monument that dramatically overlooks the town for which it is named. It commemorates the heroic actions of American and French troops in the Valley of the Marne. In August and September of 1918, French and American forces launched a major offensive against the Germans known as the Wazen Campaign. Here, the Doughboys showed their fierce fighting spirit, and there are many graves because of it. About 70 miles east of Paris is Wazen American Cemetery. In this beautiful place are the graves of more than 6,000 Americans. The focal point of the cemetery is a Romanesque memorial. At its center rests a carved marble altar signifying the sacrifice of the fallen. Among the headstones is that of Sergeant Joyce Kilmer, a noted American poet, remembered for his poem, Trees. He was killed by a sniper only 800 yards from the cemetery. In September 1918, the U.S. Army began its first independent operation in the saint Miel sector in eastern France. Following four days of furious fighting, the Germans were driven back but with a tremendous cost in lives. 190 miles east of Paris is saint Miel American Cemetery. It rests at the center of the salient where the majority of these more than 4,000 war dead lost their lives. The memorial is an exceptional work of classically styled architecture. Inside its small chapel is an impressive mosaic of an angel sheathing a sword of victory. At the center of the grave plots stands a carved sundial of an American eagle with the inscription, Time will not dim the glory of their deeds. About 10 miles from the cemetery is the impressive Montsec Monument. It commemorates the reduction of the saint Miel salient and looks out over the field of battle. Further north, in the vicinity of the Somme River, combined British, Canadian, and American forces battled the Germans at the heavily reinforced Hindenburg Line. Fighting through machine gun fire and barbed wire, American losses were high. 120 miles northeast of Paris is Somme American Cemetery. 
It is situated in the place where the 107th Infantry Regiment suffered nearly 1,000 casualties during the first day's attack. At one end of the cemetery stands a small memorial chapel. Inside, a crystal cross directs sunlight on the names of the missing. An inscription above the chapel honors those who died for their country. In late September of 1918, American forces joined with the French and the British in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive in eastern France. It was the largest offensive in American military history, lasting 47 days with over a million men at arms. It also entailed the greatest loss of American life. Near the French city of Verdun, 300 miles northeast of Paris, is Meuse-Argonne American Cemetery. It is the largest American World War I cemetery. Within these 130 acres are the remains of more than 14,000 Americans. Nine Medal of Honor recipients are buried here, a testament to the valiant nature of the fighting. The memorial building contains a large central chapel. Outside, there are walkways that commemorate the missing in action. Groups of French school children frequently come here to visit the graves and learn the lessons of history. A short distance away is the imposing Montfaucon Monument. It commemorates the victory of U.S. and French armies in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. An observation platform provides a commanding view of the Meuse-Argonne battlefield in all directions. Throughout the war, American forces also fought to the north of France in Belgium, along with the British. In the final weeks of the war, two U.S. divisions suffered heavy casualties. Ninety miles west of Brussels, Belgium, is Flanders Field American Cemetery. It is located on a battlefield where many of its nearly 400 war dead fell. Ten of the soldiers buried here died on the last day of the war. In this small cemetery, one can feel the famous poem, Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard among the guns below. When the guns went silent on November 11th, 1918, it was called the war to end all wars. But a quarter century later, there would be an even greater need for American military cemeteries. On a December morning in 1941, a new enemy suddenly and violently appeared. With the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, America entered World War II. Over a period of four tumultuous years, more than 400,000 Americans lost their lives. More than 78,000 were missing in action. After the war, temporary American military cemeteries were scattered in nearly every part of the world. 171,000 of these war dead were returned to the United States. But families of over 93,000 fallen Americans requested that their loved ones remain buried overseas alongside comrades in arms. To honor their sacrifice, 14 new permanent World War II memorial cemeteries were commissioned by ABMC. America's war in the Pacific was a gargantuan effort, moving men and weapons across a vast expanse of ocean 
towards the enemy's homeland. By the time General Douglas MacArthur returned to the Philippines, the loss of American life was enormous. The largest American World War II cemetery is in the Philippines. Manila American Cemetery is located just outside the country's capital city. Buried here are more than 17,000 Americans who died in the Pacific theater of the war. There are 28 Medal of Honor recipients. Filipino soldiers who fought with the Americans also rest here. Groups of school children frequently come to visit to learn more about the long-standing relationship between the United States and the Philippines. Inside the memorial are walls of the missing, inscribed with more than 36,000 names. They include the five Sullivan brothers who died together when their ship, the USS Juno, was sunk off Guadalcanal. 85 miles north of Manila is a site of the infamous Bataan Death March. The Cabanatuan Memorial marks the location of a Japanese prisoner of war camp that held 20,000 American servicemen and civilians captive from 1942 to 1945. As war raged in the Pacific, battlefields won a quarter century earlier in Europe were back in the hands of an enemy of freedom. U.S. combat operations against Italy and Germany began on the shores of North Africa in places like the Kasserine Pass, thousands of Americans perished. On the coast of North Africa today, just outside the city of Tunis, Tunisia, is North Africa American Cemetery. It is a small oasis in this frequently hot climate. Resting here are more than 2,800 Americans who lost their lives in the landings and occupation of Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. Among the many headstones, you will find that of Foy Draper, a gold medal winner from the 1936 Olympics, a reminder that America gave her very best for the cause of freedom. Meanwhile, in England, U.S. bomber squadrons flew continuous missions over enemy positions in occupied Europe and Germany. At the height of the war, one out of ten airmen lost their lives. Fifty miles north of London, near the university town of Cambridge, is Cambridge American Cemetery. The more than 3,800 Americans buried here were killed in nearly every military operation launched in Europe in World War II. Many were crew members of British-based American aircraft. On the tablets of the missing, you will find the name of Alton Glenn Miller, the famous big band leader, whose plane went down over the English Channel. Inside the memorial is a large map room and chapel. A dramatic ceiling mosaic depicts the flight of heroes into eternity. Following the campaign in Africa, the Allies invaded Sicily and mainland Italy, where tens of thousands of Americans fell. About 40 miles south of Rome, Italy, near the famous Anzio Beachhead, is Sicily Rome American Cemetery. In this stately burial ground are the remains of more than 8,000 American men and women. The spirit of the memorial is captured in the Brothers in Arms statue that stands at its center. The memorial also has an impressive map room and a chapel on whose walls are carved the names of the missing. On the ceiling is a unique sculpted dome that depicts the planets in the same positions they occupied at the precise moment of the Anzio landings. 
when American troops finally entered Rome in the spring of 1944. More than 30,000 of their comrades had died. Many more would follow before Italy was completely liberated. 150 miles northwest of Rome, just outside the famous city of Florence, is the beautiful Florence American Cemetery. Interred in this pristine setting are the remains of more than 4,000 American servicemen and women. This veteran fought in the area and has returned to visit his comrades. Every one of the men were, were great men, great fighters. I hope this cemetery stands for thousands of years so people will never forget it. A statue of a regimental soldier watches over the graves as the Tuscan sun rises and sets on the cemetery. On June 6, 1944, a massive Allied force made its historic journey across the English Channel to land on the bloody beaches of Normandy, France. More than 3,000 men died on D-Day. Thousands more were lost in airborne operations and in the breakout from the beachhead. About 150 miles northwest of Paris, overlooking the famous Omaha Beach, is Normandy American Cemetery. On these hallowed grounds are the remains of over 9,000 servicemen and women. In the open arc of the memorial, facing the graves area, is a 22-foot bronze statue, the spirit of American youth rising from the waves. Here rest three Medal of Honor recipients, including the son of a president. From an overlook just north of the memorial, the daunting challenge and intense combat of the landings can be visualized. Eight miles down the rugged coast is the Point to Hawk Monument. It honors the American Rangers who scaled this hundred-foot cliff and suffered great losses. Also nearby is the Utah Beach Monument. It commemorates the actions of the American 7th Corps and overlooks Utah Beach, one of the two American landing sites during the Normandy invasion. The Normandy landings were just the beginning. U.S. and Allied forces faced bitter opposition in the hedgerows and during the breakout from saint Lô and the drive to Paris. 170 miles southwest of the French capital is Brittany American Cemetery. More than 4,000 American servicemen and women are buried in this beautiful setting. At the base of the Romanesque chapel is a dramatic sculpture of youth triumphing over evil. Many French families adopt graves and visit frequently to place flowers and honor the fallen. Memorial Day ceremonies here and at other ABMC cemeteries are heavily attended by local residents. Each day the chapel bells toll for the Americans who liberated this region. In August 1944, another Allied invasion took place on the southern coast of France. In operations Dragoon and Anvil, American forces stormed ashore, but not without the loss of life. Located about 16 miles from the Mediterranean coast, on the outskirts of the French city of Dragunion, is Rhone American Cemetery. Nearly 900 of our servicemen and women rest here today. On the face of the memorial, a carving of an angel of peace watches over heroes as they sleep. The memorial chapel contains an extraordinary mosaic that symbolizes the mourning of families for their loved ones. Outside, rows of olive trees planted among the headstones 
lend an unforgettable peacefulness to the scene. In September 1944, American forces advancing from Normandy and southern France joined up near the French town of Epinal and began a steady drive toward Germany, taking heavy casualties as they advanced. About 200 miles southeast of Paris is Epinal American Cemetery. Among the more than 5,000 headstones are members of the highly decorated 442nd Infantry Regiment, comprised of Japanese Americans. The memorial has an imposing and dignified court of honor with bas-relief carvings on its facade. Inside, a large mosaic map depicts American military operations in the region. An inscription reads, this is their memorial. The whole earth is their sepulcher. North of France, another Allied offensive was taking place in the Netherlands. In Operation Market Garden, American bombers filled the skies, and the largest number of paratroopers in history was dropped behind enemy lines. Outside the city of Maastricht, Holland, is Netherlands American Cemetery. Buried in this gentle farmland are more than 8,000 servicemen and women. They lost their lives in airborne and ground operations to free Eastern Holland and during the advance into Germany. The entrance to the memorial has walls engraved with the names of the missing. At one end stands a sculpture of a woman in mourning flanked by doves of peace. This troop of American Girl Scouts has come on a special journey to pay their respects. Since the war, the cemetery has had a special relationship with local residents who adopt graves and visit regularly in gratitude for their liberation. Late in 1944, the German army launched a massive counterattack in the Ardennes forest in what became known as the Battle of the Bulge. Tens of thousands of Americans lost their lives during the cruelest winter in memory. Near the border of eastern Belgium, about 10 miles from the city of Aachen, Germany, is Henri Chapelle American Cemetery. More than 8,000 Americans are buried here, who fell during the Battle of the Bulge, the Battle of the Hurtgen Forest, and the Battle of Aachen. Survivors often return out of respect for their fallen comrades. 22 American prisoners massacred by the German SS at Malmedy rest here. Above the graves stands a dramatic sculpture of a winged angel bestowing a laurel branch to the heroic dead. Just 20 miles to the southwest, near the city of Liège, Belgium, is Ardennes American Cemetery. Here lie the remains of more than 5,000 Americans who died during the Battle of the Bulge, the strategic bombardment of Europe, and the advance to the Rhine. Major John J. Gerstad sacrificed his life flying his crippled plane into an enemy oil refinery. Inside the memorial are large battle maps made of inset marble that depict the Battle of the Ardennes. Keeping watch over this field of honor is a bronze statue of youth, a reminder that those who died were in the prime of their lives. Following the victory of the Allies in the Ardennes, the U.S. Third Army, commanded by General George Patton, liberated the small duchy of Luxembourg, but at a high cost. Just outside the capital city of Luxembourg is Luxembourg American Cemetery. 
more than 5,000 Americans came to their final rest in this 50-acre burial ground. On a terrace overlooking the graves, visitors can study troop movements and battles in the region. Along the walkways in the cemetery are descending pools of water ornamented with bronze dolphins. Stone pylons contain the names of the missing. Many come to see the grave of General Patton, buried here with his men. In March 1945, two U.S. armies crossed the Rhine River and began their final drive into Germany. The end was near for Adolf Hitler and his Nazis, but many more Americans would not live to see the surrender. About 220 miles east of Paris, near the town of saint avold France, is Lorraine American Cemetery. More than 10,000 Americans are buried here, who died during the advance into Germany in the final phase of the war in Europe. You're just taken by surprise by the sheer number of graves. You realize the number of young men that died. Above the altar in the memorial chapel, a large sculpture group depicts the eternal struggle for freedom. The cost of that freedom will be remembered here for posterity. After World War II, the role of the American Battle Monuments Commission expanded to include two overseas cemeteries in Mexico and Panama. This is the Mexico City National Cemetery, a quiet tropical garden tucked within the Mexican capital. Buried here are veterans of the American Civil War, the Indian Campaigns, and the Spanish-American War. The cemetery was established in 1851 by an act of Congress to gather the American dead of the Mexican War who lay in nearby fields. Further south, in the country of Panama, is Corozal American Cemetery. Here are more than 5,000 American veterans and others who died during the construction and operation of the Panama Canal. Some died from the dreaded yellow fever. Veterans from nearly every American conflict are buried here. This memorial overlooking the graves symbolizes the bond between the United States and Panama. ABMC also maintains three memorials on home soil. Near the southern tip of Manhattan Island, New York, is the East Coast Memorial. It commemorates those who lost their lives in the western waters of the Atlantic Ocean during World War II. Close to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California, is the West Coast Memorial. It contains the names of those who lost their lives in the eastern waters of the Pacific during the Second World War. On the Hawaiian island of Oahu is the inspiring Honolulu Memorial, honoring those listed as missing in the Pacific theater of World War II, as well as the missing from the Korean and Vietnam Wars. In Washington, D.C., ABMC constructed three national memorials that are now part of the national park system. They include the World War I American Expeditionary Forces Memorial, the Korean War Veterans Memorial, and the World War II Memorial. It can be said that the degree to which we commemorate our war dead is a mark of the nation's greatness, a measure of its heart and soul. With these extraordinary cemeteries and memorials around the world, America keeps faith with her fallen.
ABMC invites all to experience these commemorative shrines and can provide the best routes and modes of travel to its cemeteries and memorials. It helps history come alive to be here. I just hope that more people do visit these many U.S. military cemeteries overseas and they can experience that for themselves. Those who walk these fields of honor depart with a heightened sense of respect and thanks for the thousands of Americans who gave their lives so the world might live in peace and freedom. For more information, visit the ABMC website at abmc.gov.